the whole story around Vcosta Pro is born from interactions with very fast scaling startups and very large enterprises. Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Lucas Gently, CEO of Loft Lab. Lucas, good to see you after a long time. Yeah, hi, hey, Swapnil. Good seeing you again. Thanks for having me on today. It's my pleasure to, of course, host you again. And today we are going to talk about V Cluster Pro. Uh, talk a bit about the Pro in the name V Cluster. <laughs> there's so many people excited about uh, our open source project V Cluster. You know, there's over 40 million virtual clusters out there. There are some major companies uh, building on top of our solution. There were people speaking at KubeCon about how they were rolling out hundreds and thousands of virtual cluster. Uh, a lot of people save a ton of uh, infrastructure costs with virtual clusters. Uh, but there are certain things that you cannot do in the cluster in the in the you know part itself that you're launching to start up a virtual cluster you need something external you need kind of a control plane you need uh, a crd uh, you need a management ui right uh, you may want to add like audit logging and sso centralized for all of your v clusters um, so we are thinking okay this this is something that needs to live outside of uh, vCluster, but it needs to be connected with vCluster. And then there are certain things um, in the vCluster core itself, in the distribution, the vCluster distro, um, where people just are demanding more security uh, guardrails, more performance um, optimized features, and they're very, very enterprise uh, focused features. Um, so we, we were thinking about uh, creating a commercial offering around it. And uh, yeah, we're announcing that uh, right now with Vcosta Pro. Can you also talk about when we look at this Pro version? Uh, because sometimes what happens a lot of, you know, when you do come with the, uh, enterprise editions, you are working with a company because they had the pain point that you're just in solves. So, so can you elaborate a bit on if there is any design partner or customer for Vcosta Pro? The whole story around Vcosta Pro is born from interactions with very fast scaling startups and very uh, large enterprises. Uh, most of the uh, folks that we engaged with in the pilot phase were either like, you know, global Fortune 500 companies uh, or really, really quickly growing uh, startups. One company in particular that was an amazing design partner for us uh, was CoreWeave. Um, CoreWeave is a cloud provider that is focused on GPUs. They're really shipping the next wave of, you know, NVIDIA, GPUs for AI workloads um, to a massive amount of, of people at this point. Um, they're based in New York City and they have, uh, you know, an, they build an incredible product to uh, power these, these AI workloads. A lot of this, these startups building uh, on AI right now are running uh, on top of CoreWeave. And, you know, you may have seen like OpenAI's uh, engineering blog. Uh, everything they do is based on Kubernetes, right? So a lot of these AI companies are banking heavily on Kubernetes. They need a lot of Kubernetes power. So CoreWeave was looking to partner with a company that can help them scale Kubernetes beyond the limits uh, of what you can do with, with physical uh, clusters. And then virtual clusters was a perfect solution. So they were a very early design partner for us. And we're super excited that we, uh, you know, that they gave us the permission to also talk about this case. And uh, yeah, we also have a joint uh, KubeCon talk uh, that will discuss how, how, how in detail uh, they're using vCluster and vCluster Pro uh, under the hood to, to deliver GPUs to their customers with Kubernetes. Pro will be serving a much larger, you know, customer base there. Can you talk about how and where does vCluster Pro fit in a company's cloud native or infrastructure stack? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're running more than just a couple of virtual clusters, then you probably want to look into vCluster Pro. Uh, most people that we engage with uh, today, they're thinking in the numbers of like 100 plus virtual clusters. Uh, and then really the management and the security controls around so many virtual clusters uh, is a big focus, uh, as well as the you know uh, resource consumption and performance of these virtual clusters. One very exciting thing we're doing in vCluster Pro, for example, is we're pulling core DNS, which was running alongside each of your V clusters. We pull it inside of V cluster and ship it directly um, with V cluster in a security hardened container image. That means we can, um, instead of launching two pods, we just launch one. 
So that's obviously a lot more efficient. It stands up quicker. You have less pieces to manage, right? Um, and essentially, we make this part of our uh, promise to you that we're kind of obviously updating this, looking at um, uh, you know any any patch releases, feature releases coming out, and really pushing out uh, core DNS uh, joined with uh, with the cluster rather than as a as a separate DNS solution for each of the cluster. Uh, and then on top of that, there's a lot of like management functionality. Um, that people are profiting from. So if you are setting up um, authentication for each one of your virtual clusters individually, that becomes very tedious when you have, uh, you know, 100 plus virtual clusters and different teams and users using them. So with vCluster Pro, you launch a management um, uh, UI and, and you have a management CLI that will essentially allow your engineers to access these via, uh, V clusters via uh, their SSO. You have audit logging for any interactions that they do inside their virtual clusters um, and a lot more. And one feature in particular that's important for a security perspective is, uh, you know, typically when you launch a V cluster, the V cluster part itself, alongside with the applications that you launch in the V cluster, typically run in the same namespace in the same Kubernetes cluster. But we launched a feature in vCluster Pro called Isolated Control Plane that allows you to run the vCluster pod, the control plane of the vCluster in one Kubernetes cluster, and then the tenant workloads of your engineers that are working in that vCluster in another Kubernetes cluster. That means when you have hundreds of Kubernetes, uh, hundreds of virtual clusters, you can have one cluster that manages all of your virtual clusters control planes and nobody can touch it and launch any other workloads in this cluster, which makes it much more stable, much more secure. If you're a platform team, you can now guarantee uptime of these virtual clusters. You can upgrade them. Um, you can have like rolling upgrade windows, right? There's a lot of things you can do uh, with centralizing these control planes. And then your workloads, they run in separate clusters, so they can't reach the control plane uh, unless through the, the regular API calls, right? Um, and that's that's super valuable from a security perspective as well. How easy or difficult it is to work uh, between, you know, the community version, which is vCluster open source project and vCluster Pro. We made the, the focus of this initial release to make it as easy as possible for people to get started with vCluster Pro and explore it. So if you already have the vCluster CLI installed, well, you're ready to go. The only thing you need to run is the command vCluster Pro start, and it's going to fire up vCluster Pro in your cluster, which is a centralized control plane for all your virtual clusters. And then essentially it immediately detects all these virtual clusters, and then you can import them into Pro. That means you upgrade them technically, right? Because these vClusters, they run their separate core DNS, right? And they don't have these features enabled, like as a control plane. There's a couple of other security and performance features that are uh, not available in the open source. If you are opening up the dashboard or you're running the command vCluster import, with one command, you can essentially uh, turn a vCluster into a Pro distro vCluster. Uh, and it, it couldn't be easier uh, than that. And we also have the functionality to, uh, you know, revert things back and give you a smooth path uh, back to the open source. If vCluster Pro is just something you were curious about and, you know, just wanted to, to look into that. But we're trying to keep them as compatible as possible and keep the, the experience uh, as much uh, the same as possible. So you have a very, very smooth transition. Uh, you know, you're essentially running vCluster Pro start and then you're running vCluster create. And now you're creating a Pro vCluster instead of an open source one. Um, very, very smooth transition. Same CLI, same docs link, right? Um, obviously, we show you which of the pages uh, focus on Pro and which should focus on the, the open source piece of the project. Uh, but we really wanted to make it a very integrated experience to not uh, confuse things between uh, the commercial vCluster Pro and the open source uh, version that's available. Talk a bit about the benefits and use cases for vCluster Pro, not just vCluster. Yeah, so I think anyone who wants to enable self-service for virtual clusters and who wants to run virtual clusters at scale in a very secure way, they're probably going to look into vCluster Pro. For Corey, for example, right? They obviously, they're cloud provider, right? So security is of utmost importance for these guys, right? Um, if you're using vCluster for internal use cases, Obviously, security is a priority as well, but they're dealing with other people's workloads, right? With 
three, five different clusters, right, running alongside each other on the same host cluster, and we, they need to isolate them, right? They need to make sure that obviously customers can't cross boundaries, right? And they're locked into the V cluster. V cluster Pro makes it incredibly easy. And also uh, it helps you with the, the CRD, right? You have a control and a CRD. V cluster uh, open source is just a Helm chart. So there's not a lot of lifecycle management. We all know that upgrading Helm charts, uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when, uh, when you do that. Um, if you have a controller uh, and, and a CRD, then you have a V cluster object in Kubernetes now. And that object is managed by our software that makes sure you can smoothly upgrade them. You can roll back changes, right? You can see which V cluster is behind and it's a security patch, right? You can version uh, and create templates for uh, these individual V clusters to say like, hey, this is our standard V cluster with Argo CD batteries loaded, right? And if someone in the company needs that, boom, just instantiate the template and Argo is already running in there with the version and with the security um, constraints that you put in place uh, for that setup. And that makes it really great for self-service. So if you're looking to make V cluster available internally, that's a really great solution. If you're like CoreWeave and you're a cloud provider and you're literally spinning up the clusters for uh, other people or launch your Argo application side of it and then give Argo to your customers, that's another really great use case. So we typically see the internal use case, multi-tenancy for Kubernetes for internal use to reduce cost, right? Not to have so many clusters around, right? Uh, that's a lot of the reasons why people switch over to vClusters instead of real clusters. And then we see the production use case where companies like CoreWeave uh, want to achieve multi-tenancy to host their own software, or in this case, even cloud infrastructure that needs to be isolated on the Kubernetes level for their different customers. If you look at this space, uh, the fact is that cloud native uh, Kubernetes ecosystem, uh, it's very like overwhelming. If you look at the CNCF landscape, so many logos are there. Complexity is there and it is going to stay there. That is the fact. The complexity is not going to go away. What we have to do is to make it easier for our customers to deal with this complexity. There are a lot of players who offer managed Kubernetes solutions. You know, they are known as managed Kubernetes providers. Even Google, you know, with the GK Enterprise, they are trying to uh, make it easier to kind of uh, manage fleet of clusters. Do you compete with uh, folks like Google or uh, um, uh, just just talk a bit about, of course, this is a market where there will be a mix of solutions. Fo folks will pick and choose whichever work for them. They will even mix two different vendors. But what I want to understand is that how do you differentiate yourself from some of these players and on what you know, kind of label you compete with them? We're glad that we found a niche with virtual clusters. Um, that, that only we are serving at this point. Uh, there are a couple of, you know, smaller companies that also have integrated our open source V cluster, but they're essentially, uh, relying purely on what's available in the open source. All these innovations that we put in V cluster pro, for example, in the past, you know, this is a project that's been going on for like over nine months internally. Um, there's so much innovation going in this as well. Um, that if you're looking into vCluster, it's the obvious choice to go with the makers of vCluster, right? With the inventors of the technology, with the ones that have the deep knowledge and really the deep uh, experience on how to run these things um, for, you know, security um, related, uh, you know, use cases or for large scale uh, or really that enterprise, um, you know, environment. And, and people people trust us, right? They saw our open source, they saw the quality we put into vCluster, and they they know that vCluster Pro and anything we we add on top on the commercial side has that same level of uh, you know sophistication and and you know reliability uh, that they can trust. I think with regards to competition, you know, obviously there's uh, you know offerings like EKS and GKE where you, that that make it very easy for you to create a Kubernetes cluster. And you know, we are complementary to them. You cannot run a V cluster without a real cluster, right? So ultimately, you got to have an EKS cluster, and then you launch five or ten or hundred V clusters on top of it, right? So it's not like you won't need EKS. You will still need the nodes, the VMs that power that cluster, right? We're all going to pay the AWS tax ultimately, right? <laughs> like, there's no way where uh, to do this without a cloud provider like CoreWeave or like like AWS, and. The great thing is, and you can see that with us partnering with CoreWeave, we're not really competitive to them. We actually drive more people towards cloud and towards spinning up more Kubernetes workloads 
because we make these clusters more cost effective and because we make these clusters easier to scale and manage, right? Because um, managing 500 EKS clusters is really, really hard. Managing three of them and then having dynamic, ephemeral, and non-ephemeral virtual clusters running on top of it is so much easier. And that's why a lot of people go down that route. Of course, you folks, you know, keep working on new projects. A lot of things that you cannot talk officially at this point of camera. KubeCon is coming up. So we will, uh, you know, hear a lot of things there. But if you can just get a glimpse, what are the things that Loft is working on these days? Yeah, we launched another uh, open source project, believe it or not. Uh, vCluster uh, was a hit, right? We started it two and a half years ago. And now uh, we launched another project about a half a year ago uh, called DevPod. And, uh, you know, that keeps us busy as well. It's like in the early stages of the hype cycle. Uh, it's another very exciting thing to work on. It's super, super early, right? Like we're very far away from anything like um, you know, commercialization of the project or anything like that. It's really more like an exploration, but it's the massive fraction that was trending on Hacker News. That was like, like the, the day we launched it and it became trending on Hacker News, 60,000 people started using it. Day one, right? That was amazing to see. And we got so much positive uh, response in terms of like, oh, we've been waiting on like a GitHub code spaces, open source alternative, right? We've been starting this little Python project on the side to kind of emulate. It's great that you, you know, have this project out there and you open sourced it. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, really interesting stuff going going uh, going on in the in the DevPod space as well. Um, and I'm sure like 2024, uh, we're gonna uh, have some really exciting uh, announcements in that direction uh, as well. But uh, you know, obviously for KubeCon, uh, we are heavily focusing on on the cluster because. That's very dear to our heart and to, to our Kubernetes community. And it has so many uh, exciting uh, folks out there who are like just, you know, uh, have so many good use cases for because there's so much untapped uh, uh, potential still here. We've just recently learned people are using it for um, internal workshops and e-learning. And that's even things that we haven't even, you know, like we've been focusing so much on like multi-tenancy internal platforms production multi-tenancy, right? Uh, that we haven't even tapped into like learning experience yet. Um, so I think on both of these, you know, I guess we're a multi-product company now, but uh, we, we definitely uh, drive both of these projects uh, forward. And I think there's a lot more exciting, uh, you know, stuff to come. Lucas, thank you so much for taking time out today and walk us through, you know, the whole evolution of B Cluster Pro, how it came to exist and the importance of customers that they play in this, the, the importance of the role that customers play in this space in kind of emergence of some new product, which actually end up helping everybody, uh, you know, so, you know, the rising tide lift every boat. That's what the saying goes. So thanks for all those insights. And as usual, uh, I look forward to chat with you again soon at KubeCon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.